Traders, I'm excited to present my top swing ideas for the week ahead. And this week's ideas will once again differ from last week's ideas and the previous week's ideas as the market takes a bit of a breather here amid the sell-off in the semi-stock. So while there are undoubtedly you know, top swing ideas out there week after week, it's not as straightforward as it's been for the past several months, you know, with several tech st uh, stocks every single week, week in and week out, breaking out of consolidations, trading to 52-week or all-time highs. You know, now things are taking a little bit of a reset, um, and it's essential to adjust to it. Um, just like I did last week with the short swing idea in the semis, which is obviously very different to the previous week's ideas. Um, but in the week ahead, there is a catalyst, a major catalyst with the potential to shake things up um, and cause significant directional moves. So let's get straight into it as I share my actionable ideas, my plans, my trade management for my top swing ideas for the upcoming week. So starting with the upcoming catalyst and the main stock in focus, and that's NVIDIA and NVIDIA's annual GTC conference. So after going somewhat parabolic, um, the semis, AI sector, they, you know, they took a breather over the previous week. If you look at NVIDIA here with a nice pullback, if you look at SMH, we can look at SOXL, we can look at some individual names, AMD, TSM, um, and the list goes on. And, and, you know, this comes just before a major AI conference, NVIDIA's annual GTC conference, um, and that starts and kicks off on Monday, um, you know, with over 300 um, exhibitors, including Meta, OpenAI. Um, they are going to be taking part as well in the four-day conference. So it's not just a catalyst for NVIDIA, but I think the entire sector and the overall market. Um, so staying in the loop with the latest developments and headlines, that's going to be important for the week ahead. Now, regarding NVIDIA, you know, I'm not really, I'm not looking for a multi-day swing or, or up to a one-week swing here. But the chart, as you can see, it's coiled very nicely with the contracting range, clear levels for breakdown and breakout. And, and so I think that it's presenting a solid directional move, a risk reward opportunity here for me. Um, and so here's the exact plan and what I'm thinking. So with this coiled action, um, with volume remaining steady, um, I'm looking for either a long breakout long or a breakdown short, depending on the market's reaction to um, the CEO's keynote address, which kicks it off on Monday. So again, this isn't going to be a multi-day position, but potentially just a nice one-day, full one-day swing opportunity if the stock picks a direction and trends really nicely. So for the long, what am I thinking? Well, first of all, starting on the daily chart, we can see we have a really nice coil, um, nice contracting range with clear levels of support and resistance, breakout and breakdown. And what I really like is that it, it aligns on multiple time frames on the hourly chart, those levels shine through. 15-minute chart, the levels shine through. Um, so I really like that for a momentum move in either direction. So I'm going to be looking to enter long for the long. If we can break above 900 with some authority, with some volume intraday, um, and I'm basically going to be long here with a stop at the day's low. So should we break out above 900 with some authority, with some volume, um, I'm going to be looking to enter long over 900, near 900 with a stop placed at the low of day. Um, or potentially, depending on the intraday setup, with the stop placed below the previous five-minute low. And um, I'm going to be trading this on the five-minute time frame as it's going to just mostly be an intraday position, potentially a full one-day swing. Now, I'm going to be looking to scale out of this position as the stock makes new highs on the five-minute time frame intraday. Um, and my lofty goal for one-day momentum move and trend high would be 950 ultimately. Um, so that's where I'd look to exit the entire position. Um, and I'm going to be looking to trail the position as it works, as it trends using higher lows in the five minute time frame. Um, so the short plan is very similar to the long plan. If we break below Friday's low and around 8.50 as well, I'm going to be looking to enter short with a stop at either the high of day or the previous um, five minute lower high or potentially the breakout level if we consolidate and break lower for that momentum entry. Um, and then very similar to how I'm going to be managing the long of that plays out for the short, I'm going to be looking to cover some of my position as we make new lows, intraday lows on the five minute time frame um, with the lofty goal here being around 800 bucks. Um, and so that's going to be the plan for NVIDIA. The next one is going to be very conditional. Um, you know, this was the top idea from last week's watch list, which was obviously the short idea for move into a potential supply zone near 50 plus to 52. We had a nice push um, on 
Tuesday, I believe, and um, that provided a really nice entry. And then obviously we got followed through down to 45, which was the target, but we traded all the way sub 42s. But that was a really nice idea. But coming into this week, um, it's actually going to be a reactive long idea for a bounce. Um, specifically, what I'm looking at is, you know, after one week of straight selling, a hefty sell off from its high as well, um, I'm now kind of stalking it for a potential bounce across the sector. It's going to be very reactive, obviously, to the action in NVIDIA, its largest individual stock holding, um, and other top holdings um, and heavyweights of the sector, AMD, TSM, um, AVGO, for example. But here's the specific plan in SOXL, am I thinking? With the catalyst this week, um, this is going to be a highly reactive trade, but with many of its holdings, like I mentioned, AMD, AVGO, with them approaching some key moving averages, AMD coming into its 50, TSM well below its five-day in trading low, but AVGO also approaching its 50-day right at it, coiled between a declining five-day and rising 50-day. Um, I think we're getting somewhat of a rubber band effect will push to the upside. Um, and so with SOXL, um, I'm trying to identify here if we get some relative strength within the sector versus some other leading sectors, if we can find um, some support and a bid, a sustained bid in SOXL and across the sector. And along with obviously momentum in NVIDIA, if all of these um, boxes are tick, ticked and aligned, that's when I'm going to look to enter long for a one to two day bounce trade. So should that relative strength shine through in the sector in SOXL, I'm going to look to get long SOXL with a stop at the day's low. My first target for a bounce is going to be either an ATR, a full ATR move, which is around three, um, or um, a move into 45.50, which I think is going to be the first potential level of supply and resistance where we might have some trouble holding above. That aligns as well with its declining five day. Um, thereafter, I'm going to look to scale out of the position again <clears throat> on the five minute time frame. So as we make um, significant new pivot highs intraday. And my stop, um, similar to that, will be trailed on the five minute time frame using higher lows. Um, but conservatively, because I think, you know, should we get a bounce, I think that it should be quite a aggressive intraday trend higher. Um, and so I'm going to be looking to trade it um, and trail it using five minute pivot um, higher lows for a stop and scale out of the position higher highs once we're above my first target of 45.50 into 46. Um, but I'm going to be, you know, definitely watching the entire sector and individual leading names very closely. And I'll be out if it makes a very clear pivot lower low on the five minute time frame. Um, and if some key holdings begin to display some weakness relative to the overall market. And then I have two additional back burner ideas. First one, SOUN. See, it's obviously very extended on a higher time frame. Let's put on VWAP here. And let me actually go to a more intraday chart. So essentially with certain, you know, amazing uh, staying power here, nice short squeeze, which is really what it is. And some, you know, buy the rumors, sell the news because they will be presenting at the conference this week as well. Now, I'm not going to be looking for a long given the price action, given how extended this is on a higher time frame. Um, but considering, you know, also how much the stock's already surged, but rather I'm eyeing some, some pops into potential areas of supply and resistance for potential sell the news trade or just a lower high, some profits look to be locked in by those that have held. So the first level, level of, of, of potential resistance I'm looking at is Friday's high, as well as some support from previous days, which might act as resistance going forward as it did on Friday. So that's going to be around 9 to 9.20. If we get a push above that in anticipation of the presentation, I'm going to be looking for a move into 10 for potential, um, you know, you can call it double or triple top, but overall just overwhelming supply and resistance to exist there for a short. And then the last back burner idea I have is a name from Friday, which traded incredible volume, VERB. Obviously, we closed below VWAP. We closed week doing a complete round trip. Um, so I suspect now that longs are trapped, there's a lot of supply that could exist and a lot of overhead. So with that being said, I'm looking for a push into 65 cents or maybe even a larger squeeze into 80 cents where I think that there could be some significant supply and resistance causing a lower high and an intraday failure in which I would then be looking to get short. So those are my top ideas for the week. Two main ideas, some back burner ideas where I'll have some alerts set. Let me know if you have any additional top watches for the week ahead. I'd love to know. Let me know your plans, what that setup is, and 
Otherwise, I'm wishing you all good luck. Remember to keep an eye on the conference headlines that are coming out. Um, look to be reactive. And I will see you all next week. Good luck. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve. And you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition. The traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafiori, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.